Imagine your watch warning you about an injury before you even feel it. If you've ever been curious about how science, movement, and now AR are coming together to shape the future of running, you're in the right place. Today, Dev and I are diving into something that's honestly blown both of our minds lately, how AR might actually help runners avoid injuries before they even happen. You know that feeling when something just starts to feel a little bit stiff, maybe a little bit sore, but you kind of just brush it off because you know, it'll loosen up after a few kilometers. That moment right there, that's where AI might change everything. I know, Sean, I mean, as runners, we are the masters of denial. Tight calves, sore hips, knees that don't feel quite right. We still lace up and we get out there just because the plan says we have to run 10Ks. But what if your watch or your app could actually pick up those warning signs before you felt them? and actually tell you, hey, maybe today we need to take it easy before it becomes a problem. That's become possible now. And honestly, it's one of the most exciting and misunderstood shifts in sport. But that's why this conversation is so exciting. For the first time, we have the tools that can actually show us those warning signs before they turn into injury. Yes, and that's what's really interesting about this shift in running tech specifically. For years, it's been just about tracking how far, how fast, how long. But AI is now changing that focus. Now, it's starting to help runners to predict, as in what's about to happen next. How ready are you to train today? Or are you perhaps on the edge of overdoing it? It's like having a tiny coach sitting inside of your watch or your app saying that, hey, if you push too hard today, you might pay for this on Sunday. Exactly. And what's powerful about that is it moves us from being reactive to proactive training. Most runners actually only make those changes once they get hurt. AI can help you course correct before that happens. So let's get into what that actually means, Dev, when we talk about AI helping to prevent injury. What's really happening under the hood? All right, let's break it down. AI works by looking at patterns, and I mean patterns that you don't really notice on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. It collects everything. So our paces, our heart rate, sleep, recovery, even subtle changes in the way you run, like your ground contact time and cadence. Over time, it learns what's normal for you. Then, this is the clever part, it flags deviations as well as large variations in your training. So for example, if you haven't trained for a while and suddenly get back into a high-low training week, you're at risk. Say your heart rate variabilities drop for three days straight, you, your resting heart rate is up, and your pace even on those easy runs suddenly starts to feel hard. That's a pattern of accumulated fatigue, the kind that can lead to the kind of soft tissue injuries if you ignore it. AI can highlight that trend before it turns into pain. So it's really like your, your training log suddenly becomes alive. It starts giving feedback and advice instead of just storing data. Exactly, that's what makes this so powerful. A spreadsheet can't tell you when your nervous system is under stress, but an algorithm that's looking at weeks of data and how you usually respond to training versus how you are responding to mm. training now can. And that's game changing for runners over 50 because the margins of error get so much smaller as you age. We've seen that firsthand with the athletes who train with us at Coach Perry on the Coach Perry app. The ones tracking trends and adjusting early stay more consistent month after month. Yes, and that's definitely something that we talk a lot about here at Coach Perry. How recovery just slows down as you age. And that's because there are tons of hormonal changes, you've got less muscle mass and there's slower muscle repair, and all of that adds up. So having something that tells you you're not bouncing back as quickly as last month, that is absolute gold. It's one of the biggest differences we notice is in the runners that we coach, when they actually listen to those signals, their training becomes so much smoother. It really does. And what's interesting, sometimes AI shows patterns that even an athlete can't feel yet. So for example, you've run a marathon, you've taken a week off, and I mean, we'll often hear it where athletes are like, you know what, I'm feeling really good, I wanna get going. But because you're not sore and you're sleeping well, you don't quite know how much fatigue is still in the body after mm. that marathon. And the only way you're going to know that is when you start running again, where AI can still say, hey, I'm not quite ready to get going yet. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's exactly what runners do. We assume the I feel fine equals I am fine. And worse, most runners even ignore what they're generally feeling anyways. But AI is looking under the hood. It's like reading your body's pre-warning signals before you can. Yes, and Sean, it's not perfect, but it's objective. And objectivity is what runners mostly lose when emotion kicks in. Absolutely. But let's, Dave, let's talk about practicality. What kind of data are we talking about here? What's, what's worth really paying attention to? So there's five big markers that most AI systems use for injury prevention or prediction, should we say. Heart rate variability, HRV, so that measures your nervous system's readiness. Low HRV for multiple days means you're under stress. Resting heart rate, higher than normal resting heart rate means your body's actually still recovering. Our sleep quality, and this is a big one, it's not just the sleep hours you get at night, but the quality that you're getting, how much deep sleep you're getting. Training load and intensity balance, are you stacking hard sessions without recovering, or are you seeing these massive variations in your training that can lead to injury? Also, pace and effort relationships. When your easy runs start to feel hard for the same pace, your system is generally overloaded. Put those together and they complete a snapshot of the stress and recovery cycle. That is brilliant. And we know as coaches that that pace versus effort aspect is specifically underrated. So many runners think that they're fine because they're hitting the same numbers. But if your heart rate's climbing all the time at the same pace, your body's already fighting to keep up, causing more strain or cost on the body. And when we do this over and over and over again, that is when this can lead to injury. Exactly. It's one of the first warning signs. I also think it's important to say though, Dev, that, that none of these numbers on their own mean that you're in danger. It's always about trends. If one thing's off for a day, perhaps that's fine. But when three or four are off for a week or more days, that's when the risk starts to climb. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. AI works best when it has context when it's reading your body's patterns over time. If you miss sleep for, I mean, one night, that's really not a red flag. But if you've had five nights of really poor sleep and your HRV is tanking, now we're seeing the bigger picture. That's what AI excels at. It connects the dots faster than a human could. And so that's, that's the science side. But now let's talk a little bit about real life. Let's say a runner starts getting those fatigue warnings over time, as we've spoken with trends, what should they do? All right, here's a four step process that I would recommend. Step one, don't panic. I mean, that's easier said than done. But a dip in your recovery really isn't a crisis, it's just a signal. Step two, adjust your training load. Swap hard runs for an easy run, uh, maybe replace an interval session for a recovery jog or a mobility type session. Reduce your training volume or your frequency to build back up slowly. Step three, prioritize recovery. This is vital. That means your nutrition, your hydration, proper rest, especially sleep. Step four, light strength and mobility work. When your system is tired, you can still train your system without stressing it further. Exactly, and, and this brings us perfectly to what we've wanted to share with you today. If you're watching this and you know you need to do more strength work, but you never really know where to start, we've put together a free online strength class for runners and you can do it at home. No fancy equipment, no complicated moves, just simple exercises and you can grab it below. AI can warn you when something's wrong, but strength training helps you handle that load without breaking down. AI flags the problem, strength training fixes it before it actually even starts. Exactly. And so think of AI as your smoke detector, where strength is your fireproofing. I love that analogy. Combining those two, smart data tracking plus regular strength work, could probably be the single best strategy to reduce your injury risk for runners over the age of 50. Yeah, absolutely love that. And, and I'd add that for runners just getting back into it, maybe returning after a break, AI can also help you build back gradually. It'll pick up where your body's adapting well versus when you're piling on too much too soon. Yep, 
definitely a lot of injuries come from doing the right training but in the wrong order in most cases ai helps pace that progression so your aerobic system muscles and connective tissue adapt together that's something even experienced runners very often get wrong right and you get fitter before you get stronger and then the injuries creep in because your cardiovascular system is ready but perhaps your joints and your musculoskeletal system is not and that's another great example of how ai helps it can show you that disconnect quite early if your recovery metrics are lagging behind your performance metrics it's time to slow down before your body forces you to Dev, before we get into that i actually want to touch on something that's really important because everyone's talking about ai right now but not all AI is created equal. A lot of apps claim to use AI, but in reality, many are just using very simple algorithms. They're reacting to surface level data like pace or sleep hours, but not actually learning from your patterns over time. And so the difference is that true AI systems adapt. They learn your personal trends, how you respond to training, recovery, stress, and they adjust feedback based on that. And that's the difference between a generic warning and a personalized insight. Exactly. AI doesn't just follow preset rules. And by preset rules, I mean sort of, and this is a generic AI, but set algorithms that plug in some of your data. And to be fair, would probably give you and me the same response if we just missed a training session. It uses your own data history to spot subtle shifts, even that you might miss. It's aware of your context, and that's what makes it so valuable. You need to keep in mind that if I miss a training session or a week's worth of training session, True AI is going to adapt my plan to make sure I pick up appropriately again, rather than just diving where I left off. Yeah. So if you're using a platform that claims to have AI, it's definitely worth asking, is it learning from me or just telling me the same thing it tells everyone else? Because that difference between automation and intelligence is where the real progress lies. Okay, so here's a tricky question, Dev. Can AI ever eliminate running injuries altogether? No, and to be fair, I don't think we want it to. Running is a stress and recovery sport. Every time you run, it's creating small amounts of damage and tears to the body, and then it repairs itself stronger. The goal isn't to eliminate that stress, otherwise you'll never get stronger, but it's about managing that stress so much better. AI helps you find that sweet spot between training enough to improve and not so much that you break down. Yes, I love that. It's not about never getting sore, it's about getting stronger without falling apart. Exactly, and I think that's really exciting is that the more data we gather, so from our watches, our shoes, even our running form sensors, the better AI gets at tailoring the feedback for you. It's not just comparing you to the average runner anymore. It's learning your personal patterns. And that's so powerful because every runner's normal is different. What's fatigue for me might be fine for someone else. So having a system that learns your specific rhythm that's where it becomes really valuable. Spot on. And that's why I always say AI won't replace coaching, it amplifies it. A coach gives context, AI gives data. Put them together and you've got the perfect balance of science and sense. Totally, totally agree. And honestly, that's what's so fun about this time in running. For the first time, everyday runners have the same kind of insight elite athletes have had for years. Yes, it's like High performance data has become accessible to everyone. You don't need a lab anymore, just a watch, a phone, and the willingness to listen. But here's what most runners miss. Sometimes your fitness improves faster than your body can keep up. You feel strong, the watch numbers are looking great, and then suddenly something breaks. That disconnect between progress and readiness is what our next video, Training Age versus Real Age, is all about. Click here to watch it now because it'll help you understand how your training history shapes recovery and why managing that balance keeps you running pain-free.